In today's video, we're going to look at some of the files from the A6700 and see what they look like. Stay tuned. So after supper tonight, I decided to take the A6700 out to do some bird photography with it. I just received it yesterday and I hadn't had a chance to really use it yet, so I thought I'd get it out and do some tests. I put the 200 to 600 Sony lens on it, the FE lens that I got, and set it up on my tripod with my uh, Really Right Stuff BH55. And I have a big tripod, a Robus uh, RC5570, I think it is. Anyways, it's a heavy tripod. And I went out and sat on the backyard. So let's go out in the backyard, come with me, and see what we got. Well, hello there. We're going to put the uh, A6700 with the 200 to 600 lensed to the test. I've come out to my backyard studio this evening, and it's about an hour before sunset, and I've set up right there on my tripod. I'm using my um, Robus RC. Um, which one is that? So right there is my rig set up on my tripod. Got my really right stuff BH55 ball head and my Robus RC5570, I believe, tripod. And I'm going to sit down right here on this deck and be very quiet and see if I can get some bird photographs tonight. I've got two hummingbirds out here, two different feeders, and I've seen some bluebirds. I put a little bit of water in the bird bath right there, put some bird seed out. I'm just going to sit down and be real quiet and see what kind of photographs and I might try to do some video too, do some video testing with this. I've done a minimal setup on this camera. I've got bird animal autofocus detect on and so far I've done some test shots and it's uh, picked up the eye really quick and then I've, uh, I'm doing the raw format, the raw, the raw file format tonight. I made a mistake yesterday, I did some shots yesterday in the HEIF. I didn't understand what that was. I had to ask a friend of mine that's not raw, okay? I'll, I'll tell you what that is later. Anyways, we're gonna do some shooting tonight and see what we can come up with. So I've got two hummingbirds out here tonight and they're right over there, or one of them is by that feeder, and the other one's right there in mid-flight. That's a male. Uh, it's got the red throat and he just perched on that branch up there. I'm gonna try to get some photographs of him right now. My settings tonight are um, f6.3. I'm at about 400 millimeters. I could probably go a little tighter if I wanted to. I'm gonna try at 400 millimeters and I'm gonna try a couple of shots at 600 millimeters. Uh, one two thousandths of a second is my shutter. The ISO is floating and uh, I can't see in this display what the ISO is. There might be a setting that I need to change. I'm gonna tell you something, already, already, I love this camera. This is a, this is like 10 years ahead of the D500. I'm already loving this thing. There it is, it's on the perch. I'm gonna try to get a photograph of it now. This bird and animal detect is insane. I tell you what, I just put it near the bird and hit the autofocus button and that little box pops on that eye. Boy, I can't wait to get these in, in the computer and, and edit them, see what they look like. I've got some shots at 400 millimeters and I've got some shots at 600 millimeters. I'm probably about 25 feet away from the perch. I'm gonna turn around here so you can see what I'm talking about. If you look at the end of that trellis over there, there's a perch right there and there's a feeder right underneath it. I know it's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit with this camera. And there's the two hummingbirds right there. I don't know if you can see them in here or not. This is insane. Okay, I switched into video mode. I'm on HD 120 frames per second. Uh, I'm going to try to get some slow action video of these hummingbirds. I'll tell you, this, uh, this uh, Sony A6700 has already impressed me. On the video, I've got peaking turned on and you can see the yellow lines that shows you you're in focus. 
Well, this is fantastic. I'm shooting this video at 1 1,000th f6.3 at ISO. ISO is around 3200. Trying to get some video of these hummingbirds coming to the feeder at 120p HD. I'm using my uh, DJI Pocket 2 tonight. There's one on the perch right there to film this. There we go. There they are coming to the feeder. One thing hard, uh, hard about using this Ace 6700 is getting used to where the buttons are compared to the Nikon DSLR buttons. Like the record button is kind of weird for me, I guess got to get used to it. And the autofocus autofocus button on the back, those are the two main buttons I'm using. There's that little sucker right there. Let me turn this camera just a little bit. Well, I can't wait to dive into the menu system on this thing, get it dialed in. This is going to be fantastic this fall with some good bird photography. Uh, I'm going to Cades Cove in October. Hope to get some wildlife photography over there. I think I'm really going to love this 200 to 600 lens. I like that variable zoom on it. You know, I had the 500 PF and it was a fixed focus. And shooting at 120p uh, frames per second uh, on the HD setting for the video, you can, uh, it, it's, it's in crop mode. It, it does a crop on it in the camera, but you could back the lens off, you know, to about 500, 400 millimeters and it'll be just fine. That's what's nice about having a variable zoom on it. So on the on the back of the camera is a dial right here, and uh, the settings are, uh, this is for photographs, this is for video, and this S and G, uh, S and, um, what is it, S and O, I think that has to do with slow motion uh, shooting on there. What the camera says is mode for shooting movies. You can shoot selecting S and O motion of super slow motion shoot selecting a frame rate different from the playback frame rate hmm but i've been on the video mode right now and i'm gonna go back to the picture mode and try to get some photographs here we go there they are coming to the feeder uh, the camera's focused on the feeder right now there's one on the perch up there see if it comes down one thing hard uh, hard about using this ace 6700 is getting used to where the buttons are compared to the Nikon DSLR buttons like the record button is kind of weird for me I guess got to get used to it and the autofocus autofocus button on the back those are the two main buttons I'm using there's that little sucker right there let me turn this camera well, it's about uh, 45 minutes to sunset, and from my past experience, uh, that's when the birds start leaving the area, and I think they're going to find a place to go tonight. I'm hoping them hummingbirds come back so I can get a few photographs of them. There's one right there. A couple things I need to change right away is uh, the uh, standby timer. It's a little bit too short. The camera turns off pretty quick and uh, another thing I need to change is the uh, or I need to figure out how to move my focus point I haven't figured that out yet uh, on the Nikon you have a joystick to move I'm not too sure on this one what you move uh, well it's getting pretty dark out and uh, the bird activity is kind of slowing down so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish up here and go to the computer and I'll pick you up back at the computer Okay, here we are in Lightroom, and uh, I brought some of the photographs I took into Lightroom to have a look at them. And um, I picked this one right here, this one particular hummingbird picture. And it's got quite a bit of noise in it, as you can see. Uh, look at that full screen. You can see that noise. And uh, this was shot at one two thousandths of a second at f6.3 at uh, ISO 6400. That's quite a bit more ISO than I normally shot with the D500, uh, but I did have the, uh, the shutter speed up pretty fast, and um, normally in the D500 I'd, I would shoot around 1 1,000th or so, so this is pretty fast. We're going to see how Topaz handles this noise. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pay, uh, put a basic edit on it and how we're going to do that is we're just going to click on the auto button in the tone box of Lightroom and let Lightroom do a selection on that and see what it comes up with. The next thing we're going to do is go right into Topaz Denoise and see if it can handle this noise. So I'm going to launch Topaz Denoise. And really we're not going to do a real big edit on this photograph. We're just going to look at it. Uh, I'm in the comparison view and I'm going to slide this little box up to the head of the hummingbird. And as you can see, the standard, it didn't do very well removing the noise. Uh, the clear and the low light, I think out of all four of them, I kind of like the low light. So I'm going to click on that one and I'm going to increase the noise removal just a little bit and enhance the sharpness just a bit. Uh, make the uh, remove noise about 56 and the sharpness about 47. I'm going to go ahead and apply that see what it looks like when it gets back into Lightroom. We're dealing with raw files tonight, so these are AWR files. I had to change some of the settings on the camera. Uh, it was set up for JPEG, of course. That's the way they come in from the factory. So we're gonna look at this here and see how it did. And I think it did really well removing the noise. I just love Topaz, Topaz's products. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to apply some sharpening to the image. Hey, I just want to take a moment to interrupt the video here before we get going on this edit. Uh, if you like what you've seen so far in this video, uh, go ahead and hit the like button for me if you don't mind, okay? Thanks a lot. Um, I think first before I do that, I'm going to put a, a small crop on this. Now, normally, I'm going to go into develop and hit the crop, or you can hit R. Um, normally, I would not include the feeder but I don't have any really background interests except some bokeh. So um, I'm going to go here and make this a 16 by 9 because I'm going to use this in my video. And I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller. And I'm going to go ahead and include a little bit of the feeder just for interest. Like I said, I don't normally do feeder shots. And I'll go ahead and take that crop. Now we're going to go into Sharpen, Topaz Sharpen AI. And we'll see what it does to the bird. We're only going to sharpen the bird. I'll show you how to do a selective sharpen. I'll go ahead and hit edit here while I'm talking. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed those backyard videos. I had a lot of fun doing them. So I'm going to move the preview box over to the center. And as you can see, it's probably over sharpening this. I'm not really happy with that. So I'm going to, it's set for standard. I'm going to click on sharpen model it's going to automatically try to detect something and I probably like that better okay um, yeah I probably like that better so what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to apply any sharpening to the background I just want to apply sharpening to the bird right now it's applying it to the whole image so if you go down here to this little box and hover on that it says selectively, selectively sharpen your image so when you click on that it's going to mask the whole image. So what I'm going to do is click on the Add button. Now it's unmasked the image, nothing sharpened. And now I'm going to add sharpening just to parts of the bird that I want to be sharp. Okay, I'm not going to touch the wings, maybe just a little bit right here in the belly. And that's probably pretty good for me. What's important here is you get the eye sharp. And that eye detect on that camera was working tonight. It was on that eye. Uh, one of the problems we have with this image is it was at a high ISO. It was starting to get dark out, so it has a lot of noise in it. And it doesn't look too bad right there. I'm going to go ahead and select that, say apply, and it's going to take me back to Lightroom. And I'm going to zoom in and look at that. And it's not bad. Now what I need to do now is, is increase the exposure of the bird and decrease the exposure on the background. So I'm going to go into the masking feature of Lightroom by clicking on this or Shift W. I'm going to say select subject and it selected the bird. That's great. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to invert that selection so it's got the background. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to go here and hit these three little dots on the mask and I'm going to go duplicate and invert. Now I'm going to reduce the exposure on the background quite a bit. Uh, bring the contrast down, highlights. Now I'm going to go back to the bird and I'm going to increase the exposure on the bird 
and bring the contrast down. I like to bring the contrast down on my birds, reduce the highlights a little bit, increase the shadows, a little bit of white, a little less black, and that's not too bad. Now, the eye is kind of dark. I like to get that brightened up, so I'm going to make another mask, and this time I'm going to select brush. I'm going to hit the Z key to zoom in, and I'm just going to brush around the eye. I'm selecting the eye. Anything in red is selected. And now what I'm going to do is go down here, and I'm going to increase the exposure just a little bit, not much. And I'm going to increase the shadows just a little bit. And I believe I'm going to make it just a little bit warmer. So let me see if I can find that white balance at in this, uh, here it is, temperature. So I'm going to increase the uh, white, I'm going to go more to a, a warm feeling on that eyeball. Yeah, that's a lot better right there. I kind of like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and collapse the mask and zoom out. And it doesn't look too bad. Okay, what do you think? That's a pretty good photograph for uh, ISO 6400 out of that Sony. Anyway, that's a test shot for you. And that's all I'm going to do to that image tonight. And I hope you like that. And I'm going to try to get some more photographs uh, taken with the A6700 and that 200 to 600. I'm really liking that uh, uh, bird and animal detect uh, autofocusing. And I think it did a really well, really good job tonight. So thanks for coming by. Uh, if you like that video, give it a like, please. Uh, it would go a long ways in helping me with my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to the channel to keep up with my content. I'm going to have more and more of these kind of photograph, uh, yeah, more and more of these kind of videos where we're editing a photograph and uh, doing some sample shots out of the A6700. And I hope to get it out this weekend and, and do a lot more shooting and some good light. Like I said, tonight it wasn't so great. Anyways, thanks for coming by, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.